You can have a lot of different goals and objectives as a fiction writer. Some of those goals don't require an audience, but most writers want an audience for their stories, right? What is an audience and what kind of audience do you need? What's up, storytellers? I'm Jay Shear, author of the supernatural steampunk western Death of a Bounty Hunter and the Amazon top-selling time travel novel, Time Slingers. If you're a fiction writer, especially sci-fi or fantasy, subscribe to this channel to learn how to write and produce your own stories. Do me a favor and click that like button too. Let's get into it. What is an audience and why do you need one? Let's start with the basic definition of an audience. What is an audience? An audience is a collective group of people who want to read the stories that you write and produce. That's pretty broad and not helpful enough, but I'll dig deeper into that in a minute. Why do writers need an audience for their work? An audience is incredibly valuable for both writers and producers. If you're like me and you write and produce your own stories, then you need to develop an audience. But not just an audience, an avid core audience. People who love the stories you write and produce. You might think of an avid audience as huge fans of your stories. Even if you're not planning to produce and distribute your own original works, an audience is incredibly valuable. More and more publishers and production companies want to see that you have an audience before they sign a deal with you. Let's take off our writer's hat and look at this scenario from the producer's perspective. What is the primary objective of the producer? Whether it's the book publisher or a film production studio, what exactly are they looking to accomplish? At the end of the day, they need to make money off the stories they release. If they don't, they'll go out of business. And if they do, They'll make a lot of money and influence culture in the process. A lot of producers want to release great stories, even if those stories don't make millions of dollars. But the fact remains that even if they're passionate about a story, it still needs to make them more money than they spend on it. It needs to be profitable. When a producer looks at a story, whether it's a book, a short film, or a feature, they're looking at it as an investment. Here are some of the reasons producers may back a project. One, it'll be more profitable and make them money. That's a big reason, probably the biggest. Two, it will get a massive amount of attention and almost serve as a marketing campaign for the production company. Three, the story will bring them personal accolades or relevance in a positive way. Or four, they personally believe in the project and wanna do it even if it never makes any money or brings them any attention. But that fourth reason is extremely rare, which means that producers tend to only produce stories that bring them value, money, attention, respect, or something similar. If you're a writer, you should start to think like a producer thinks. Thinking like a producer benefits you in two ways. One, you'll be more likely to sell your stories to a producer and convince them to work with you because you know what they want. Or two, like me, you'll be able to figure out how to produce your own stories and make money off of them. But what does this have to do with building an audience? One of the primary ways that producers estimate potential sales, revenue, and profitability is by looking at the reach a writer already has, the reach that the writer is bringing to the table. A writer's reach is the size of their existing audience, the size of their following on Instagram or Twitter, the traffic hitting their web page or blog, or even sales of previously released books. But the audience is a little bit more complex than just reach because some writers have a big following, but the people who follow them aren't likely to purchase their stories. Let's just look at a quick example. If I start a popular blog about Disneyland, but then write a book about the history of prohibition in America, those two audiences don't necessarily line up. The people who read my blog won't necessarily be interested in my book, which means that producers are looking at the reach of the writer and the audience's devotion to the writer and the topic of the story. If I had a popular blog about Disneyland and then wrote a book about Disneyland, my reach would be far greater. And that devoted following is far more likely to purchase it when I promote it on the blog or website that I run. The writer, you, needs to be able to reach a group of people and get them to purchase whatever they've released. The combination of those two things, the writer's reach and the devotion of the writer's followers to the story's topic, increases the likelihood that followers will purchase and or promote the writer's stories. And this is what I call an avid 
audience. If you intend to write and produce your own stories, then you need to develop an avid audience. Not just a following, but a devoted following that will purchase the stories you release. There you go. That's what it means to have an audience and that's why avid audiences are so valuable to writers and producers, especially if you're trying to write and produce your own stories. How do we as writers and producers build an avid audience? I'll keep talking about that in future videos. If you wanna write and produce your own fiction, especially science fiction and fantasy, subscribe to this channel. If you wanna jumpstart that process and take it seriously, check out my writing program for beginner and intermediate writers. The link is in the description down below. If you like this video, please click that like button for me. Keep writing, keep grinding, and I'll see you on the next video.